Hi, I'm Darlene, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make images like these using the split toning filter in Luminar 4. Let's get started. The first technique I want to show you is something I call warm black. So I've gone ahead and applied the black and white conversion in the essentials panel. Now I'm going to hop over to the pro panel and open up split toning. Inside the split toning panel, the first thing you want to do is set what hue or kind of tint you want to apply to your picture. And in here you have a choice of applying it to the highlights and the shadows differently. I'll show you that in a minute with a duotone. So the first thing I want to show you is a little trick to find the right color. Turn the saturation up on the shadows all the way to 100. Now it gives you the full intensity of color and you can dial up the hue and decide which actual color you want on your image. So I want something for this one, like I said, warm black. So something that's a little bit on the yellow to orange side. Let's set on 45 for the hue. Then dial the saturation back somewhere in the middle. Okay, in this case, I'm going to set it to about 35 because I want a very subtle brown tone only to applying to the shadows. Okay, And I've done that to keep the highlights nice and clean so I have more of a chocolate brown effect on the picture. Let's see what happens with the split toning off. Neutral blacks without the split toning and with the split toning on it's just a very nice what I call again warm black. So I've gone ahead and saved that as a look as well so I can apply it on my other images later. The second technique I want to show you is just a simple variation of this one and all I'm going to do is increase the saturation in the highlights this time as well. So I'm going to change the, the tint a little bit to something a bit more yellow because back in the day of actual film when we were talking about sepia tone and that's what I'm going to make here is a sepia tone it was a bit more on the yellow side so let's make it a little more intense and I'm using a hue of about 61. So I can go ahead and type that in where the zero is here. Okay, go ahead and type in 61 for the hue under the highlights and then increase the saturation to taste. So you can go as high as you want or as low as you want and decide how you like the look the best. And once you're done and happy with that, you can save that as a look as well. The next one I'm going to show you is what's called a duotone. And this is where you actually change the color on the highlights and the shadows differently to a different hue. So I'm going to start with one of the presets that I just made. I'm going to start with the black and white sepia. And you can see down in the bottom here under my user looks, I've got one called black and white sepia. And that's the one I just created. Okay, now I'm just going to alter it. So let me turn that off and I'm going to change the shadows to be more of a blue tint. So let's dial that up into this range. You get to decide what color you like. And I'm going to give the highlights a bit more saturation. So this is kind of what you would call a blue tint. And this time you get to decide how much a blue or how much yellow applies. And you have this little balance slider at the bottom. So if you move it to the right, you see more of the highlight color applying. And to the left, you see more of the shadow color applying. So I'm going to go with something in the middle, maybe a little more blue, something like that. Once you're happy with it, you can also save that as a look and maybe call it something like duotone. And you can make various different kinds of duotones just by shifting the colors that you're using. I've got yellow and blue here, but you could do something that is more on the red or purple side. You can shift your highlights more towards green and make a totally different duotone look and save that one as well. So now you can see I've saved four different looks. I've got black and white, warm black and white number one, sepia number one, and duotone number one and two. And simply by clicking on these with a new image, I can see how that effect is going to look on this particular scene and decide which one I like. The last technique I'm going to show you is to apply these same kinds of looks to a color image. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make it a bit faded. So I'm going to bring the saturation down in the color panel to minus 50. And then I'm going to apply the split toning to the shadows once again. Choose my color. So it kind of gives you a nice faded but warm brown tone look. 
If you want to further enhance that look, I recommend playing around with the matte look filter, which is under the creative panel. By adding a matte look, you can make the picture look like it's really antique and old and bring the contrast down lower and something like that. You can even apply an additional tint in this filter or enhance the one that you're already using. So I love the matte look that goes along really nicely with the sepia tone to create an old world type of feeling. So I've saved a couple of luminar looks with this type of effect. Let's see how it applies on another image. Here's another street scene I shot in Old Delhi and I can quickly apply one of the looks that I just created and saved a moment ago in one click. And of course the amount slider, you can fade it in or out and all of the effects that you've applied from that look will be applied, um, softened a little bit. So this is a really quick way to uh, create an antique look for your images, find some that are appropriate, that have an old world feel, and play around with the split toning and the matte look filters in Luminar 4.